The Fish and I greatly appreciate the support of our Patreon subscribers. Our primary subscribers are GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and TrueAquaponics.com. Give them a shout out and enjoy their pages. So I have a little problem with some fruit flies getting into the strawberries. This is the, the first time that I've ever had to deal with fruit flies. And uh, they're in these uh, towers I made up a couple years ago and these are the original plants. So instead of actually treating for the flies, we're gonna get a little more drastic and just remove the entire uh, plant. They need to get replaced anyways. So they're gonna come out. These are heavy too. Got to lock those bolts in so they wouldn't fall out. Guess I'm gonna need a wrench. All right, we'll try again. This time I am more prepared and have a wrench. Take that apart. Oh. Guess I have a little flaw in the tower design because when you pull these out, the base stays in place and all the stone comes out. A little screw in there would fix that very quickly. So at this point, something went wrong with my microphone setup and I have no audio on the rest of my videos, so I'm just gonna narrate over everything. I decided to put a self-tapping screws into these bases to hold them in place, which made it much easier to remove everything without spilling expanded shale all over the place. I'm sure I was rambling about something here, most likely about how much of a nuisance it is to get these plants out of these. The PVC has sort of imploded on itself and it makes it very tight around the shale. But if you can get your fingers in there and spread it out, the plants and shale, they do slide right out. It's not too bad. They are good towers if you want to have a poor man's tower, but overall, something like the zip grow towers are just far better if you're going to be having a lot of plants coming in and out of the towers, but for a couple of years being in here, it's not too bad, but it is sort of a, a nuisance to have to deal with the plants. I did save some of the younger plants. Anything that had flowers or fruit on it, I picked them off and disposed of it. I just didn't want to have to deal with any fruit flies in the future. And all of these plants did get washed off and uh, left outside of the greenhouse for a while just to help reduce the chance of reinfecting everything with new fruit flies. I found this caterpillar mixed in with the shale. I don't know what species it is, but it ended up going for a swim with the fish. While I'm at it, I'm also going to pull out the strawberries out of the media beds. They do really well in here, but I sort of neglect them and they like to replant themselves with their runners, so it creates this thick mat of dead leaves and whatnot underneath there and it promotes disease and everything else. The strawberries in these beds also get these little tiny ants on them. They seem to like the sugar that's in the strawberries so not only do I have the fruit flies I also get ants so I'm sort of getting tired of it and they just destroy everything. I get maybe a 50% yield out of all of these plants. The fruit tends to rot pretty quickly in these beds, mainly because we don't have a huge amount of airflow in here, so the humidity stays pretty high, and any of the moisture that's in this stone just sort of comes up and gets into the berries, and it just rots them very quickly. Hopefully, removing all the fruit out of the greenhouse will be enough to stop the breeding cycle of these flies. But as a precaution, I did hang a few yellow sticky traps just to catch any that might be floating around in here. 
Last year we grew strawberries in towers, in media, and also deep water culture. And we had by far the best experience with the deep water culture berries. So we're going to start some up again this year on them. Basically I use these one inch thick rafts with two inch holes and then put the plant in the grow grips and it holds them right in place. Now the grow grips really aren't designed to hold a plant this large so I use some of my older ones that are starting to wear out. And by the end of the season the plant has definitely outgrown it and sometimes rips them apart. So it's a good sacrificial holder for a while. Without the audio in this last clip, I don't really know what insightful things I had to say. Most likely I was discussing the pros and cons of these homemade towers, and maybe a little discussion about the zip grow towers. I have a few of those, so I may set them up and replace the homemade towers. And I do have a couple of other manufacturer's towers that we might try out and do some side-by-side -side trials at some point. Most likely I was asking you to join in on Patreon too and help uh, support our site. Thanks for watching.